Beside be the Isaac face and beside carry the Isaac sound. Could you also read? Stand up and show me. Help me here. I want to relate a message. <laughs> Love is invincible. <laughs> Facing danger and death, passion laughs at the terrors of hell. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. <laughs> the fire of love stops at nothing. Wait. <laughs> Kyle, are you making this up? It's in the book. <laughs> it's in the book. <laughs> Wait a minute. What does it mean? Love is invisible. It has become extremely evident to me of late that the Kundalini spirit is rapidly spreading due to the new apostolic reformation, also known as the NER. These so-called Christian churches are now all over the globe in one form or another, masked under the guise of a new move of God. This demonic spirit has infiltrated these NER churches, showing signs and wonders all attributed to the Holy Spirit. Now nothing could be farther from the truth. In 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 1, the word of God says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. I believe we're literally living in the days of the great falling away from the faith. A great departure from truth and sound doctrine to a time of great darkness for the true church. As apostate churches swallow up the souls of our loved ones that are deceived by the lusts of the flesh. Our ministry is small, but if this message allows for one soul to question and turn from these heretics, we will have achieved a great thing as every soul is precious to God. I barely have watched to express the anger, hurt, and distress I have as I watch almost helplessly as this filth spreads literally from person to person within these churches. I'm not speaking of sickness, but a demonic spirit literally transferred through the laying on of hands from their false apostles and prophets, then from person to person in the pews. People falling to the floor, screaming and rolling in pain, as if on fire, while these leaders cry, More, Lord, as if the Holy Spirit would inflict such torment on those he loves. The Spirit can be seen manifesting on them, one by one, with uncontrollable twitching and demonic laughter. One would think that any sane person would recognize that this is not godly and run, but sadly not. They openly receive the demon, attributing all to the Holy Spirit, now, to attribute these demonic manifestations to the Holy Spirit is for me the hardest to bear. It is blasphemy to the highest level, and I find myself having to guard my own heart as anger begins to fill me. Anger as I watch thousands led astray, not by another denomination, but another religion. Yes, they speak of Jesus, but the Jesus they speak of is not the Jesus of Scripture. The Bible warns explicitly that in the last days that deception, false signs and wonders will deceive and fool many. In Matthew 24, verse 24, Jesus says, For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. These leaders are self-appointed apostles and prophets. The prophets cry peace where there is no peace. Biblical prophets call for repentance before judgment. These reprobates speak lies as if from God, only of joy and peace. The apostles lie that God has given them a seven mountain mandate to take dominion of the earth for Christ. They teach he will not return until his bride has cleansed herself and taken world dominion back to the church. They speak of great revival and prosperity for Christians. But the Bible, however, says the opposite. 
Great tribulation, persecution, and possible death awaits the righteous children of God. Christ will not return to a self-washed bride, but will return to make war with the wicked, saving his true church to himself out of the worst days the earth has ever known. In Matthew 24, verse 21, Jesus says, For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. The NAR churches are self-focused idolaters of self, rooted in the foundation of the original sin of Satan himself, pride. These churches can be clearly spotted, all following the same doctrines of the flesh, word of faith, prosperity, seeker-friendly, and the prophetic apostolic movements. Their heretical leaders speak of being drunk in the wine of the Holy Spirit, rolling on the floor around the pulpit, making complete fools of themselves, blaspheming God and the congre congregation cheer. Gone is sound doctrine, calling out for repentance of sins, crying out to the sinner to turn from hellfire to Christ. Turn or burn is no longer preached, but do God a favor and bless him with your presence, allowing him to give you your every heart desire. Sermons are taught that Jesus died on the cross because of your great value and that yes, you are a sinner, but that's not the reason for Calvary. Jesus paid the price because you are just so awesome. There is no fear of a holy God. This heresy unfortunately carries with it an eternal reward of damnation. We cannot keep quiet on matters that hold eternal consequences. In 2 Timothy verse 4, uh, sorry, 2 Timothy 4 verse 3, the Bible says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. It is of no great shock to me to see this movement join hands with another false religion, Catholicism. Members from their ranks can be seen on social media kissing and washing the feet of Catholic priests in solidarity under the umbrella of the false church. They will clearly join hands in the ecumenical movement of all for all false religions, leading to the one world religion. Now Jesus says this of them. In Matthew 7, verse 21, Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. This scripture shows the truth that many works done in the name of God, but they do not know God. All religions can do good, but in the end, their works are like filthy rags before God. It is not our core ministry to name and shame, or put ourselves on a pedestal and call all that don't subscribe to our beliefs heretics. But in this instance, to cry wolf and not point may suffer the loss of another lamb. So please take note of the following names, and by no means is this all of them, but they are the key role players in this movement and are to be avoided at all costs. The first one is Bill Johnson of Bethel Church, Chris Vallotton of Bethel Church, John Arnott, Heidi Baker, Georgian and Winnie Banoff, Lou Engel, Rick Joyner, Chi Ann, Peter Wagner, Patricia King, Brian Simmons, to name but a few. These people ascribe the works of demons to the Holy Spirit and blaspheme our God through their new revelations and additions to Scripture. Now we pray that these false teachers would repent and turn from their sin and stop leading the masses away from the true Messiah, Jesus Christ. If you currently follow any of these people or attend their churches, I will seriously plead with you that you seek God for deliverance and to open your eyes. If you show any signs of involuntary twitching or uncontrollable movements since attending these churches and not from a previously diagnosed medical condition, chances are you've been in contact with a Kundalini spirit. This is a demonic spirit and has its origins in Hinduism. It is not Christian and you need the Holy Spirit to deliver you from its grip. Now, for an in-depth teaching on the origin and workings of the Kundalini spirit, I'll leave in the link my, my wife's message called the Spirit of Kundalini. In closing, it is neither my desire to bring division nor shame on anyone. This message is done purely out of the love of, for God and his people. 
I cannot bear to stand idly by and watch as millions walk to hell under the delusion that heaven is their destination. It grieves me to no end to imagine the terror in a person's face before a holy God they do not know when they believe they served him. In Hebrews 10 verse 31, the Bible said, as it says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. This is Barry Hutton for his Infinite Mercy Ministries, preaching the truth of Jesus Christ and exposing the lies of Satan. Amen.